Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. So this is just kind of going to be me sharing my experience with the official Android 10. Now I tried the beta before, uh, beta 6 in particular and then I just kind of gave up on the betas after that and I can say that the improvements are pretty good so the phone is actually fairly usable now compared to last time when I tried it. Now there's still a few issues like um, you can't really use gestures with uh, custom launchers but that's kind of an issue with Android 10 in general not really with this phone. As you can see here I'm not using the standard Asus launcher, I'm actually using launcher and I'll show you how that's working in a second. So I'll just start a screen recorder here, so that way you guys will be able to see a lot easier what's going on, since this is going to be mostly on the phone that I'll be showing you stuff. So yeah, to get the launcher working, you actually need to find like a specific APK. Yeah, so there is a Telegram group called launch air releases so you can join that there and they'll have the launch air apk it's in stage pre-alpha but it does work with the gestures and you will also need to use a uh, quick yeah so as you can see they're crashed but like that's fine it's still better than using the useless asus stock one so it usually crashes when you uh, try and search stuff. Yeah, so the app is called Quick Launcher or Quick Switch. So it looks like this. And gotta give credit where credit is due. So thanks to Marcus Brownie for letting me be aware of this. So this is my problems with Android 10 Beta 6 video. And I guess this didn't solve like all my problems, but at least I can use a different launcher. So how to get this working is, it's actually a Magisk module. So yeah, so Magisk go to downloads and then search for a quick switch and it'll be Android 9 plus. So just download that. And once you got that done, you will need to set the launcher as your default launcher and then once you do that you just click on the launcher here to change the recent provider and your phone will reboot and then after that you can use the uh, gesture navigation so that's pretty good um, another thing as you can see we still have this annoying android bar or the whatever this pill is, I don't know what it's called, but it's annoying, shouldn't really be there in the first place. Now, thanks to a Vietnam group again, we can disable that fairly easily. So you just open up a uh, ADB shell, so to check if your phone is there, do ADB devices and your phone is there, make sure your phone is connected obviously. And then to disable it, you launch this command here. So pretty sure this means window manager overscan. Launch that and you should see that it is disabled. And the navigation, it still works just fine. So I can still swipe up for most reasons and all that kind of stuff, go back and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's kind of an essential trick, I suppose. <laughs> so that looks good, you know. And um, another thing is if you are using firewall, so I'm using AF firewall, for example, um, make sure inside preferences, inside rules, you have tour control disabled i don't know why but if you enable this this app just completely 
like it just blocks everything <laughs> so nothing has access to the internet if you enable controlling Tor I had that on Android 9 it was fine but I suppose it's no big deal since I don't really use that many Tor apps anyway so that's grand oh yeah and also Magisk Manager adds the safety net if you launch that it returns everything as true whereas before on the beta 6 one of these was false I can't remember which one I think it was the CTS profile so that's good uh, overall the experience is very smooth it's actually a lot smoother than Android 9 in my opinion I don't know if it's because they increased the animation speed or something but it just feels like super smooth we can actually check in developer options uh, what because um, there should be like an animations here all right, well, I set these to 0 0.5, but they were already the same on Android 9, but it feels like super smooth. Uh, all my apps, they work fairly well. Uh, Lucky Packager and all that kind of stuff works well as well. So yeah, overall, I am happy with this release. Uh, we just need to wait for Android 10 to get an update where they allow the use of custom launchers well if they allow custom launchers to use the recent functionality because like using this is kind of annoying <laughs> even though launcher is pretty good it has like the categories built in which is the primary reason why i use smart launcher but these are kind of like turned off by defaults and I just managed to stumble upon them in settings. Oh yeah, also for the quick switch, um, I tried some other launchers. I tried Pixel launcher and I tried uh, OnePlus launcher, but I actually couldn't get uh, any of them working with the recents the oneplus launcher most of the ones that i downloaded actually failed to start there was like a message saying this is only for oneplus phones so <laughs> that was annoying uh the pixel launcher they worked fine but like there was no option here to use pixel launcher um i don't know so i guess the one that i the ones that i downloaded they didn't support the recents provider which is kind of annoying but Let's say launcher is fine for now, if it didn't crash so much. <laughs> oh yeah. And then one more thing that is kind of strange. I'll just stop the recording here. Uh, is if you like reboot the phone or shut down or whatever, it takes like an extremely long time to restart. <laughs> so I'll show you here in real time. I won't speed this footage up or anything like that. And so this is like similar, you know, when you flash some custom ROM, the first time it boots up, it takes like for a for ages to boot up. So this is kind of the same thing, except like on every single reboot, <laughs> it takes forever. Uh, I'm not sure what why that is. But I suppose it doesn't really matter too much since, you know, you're only ever going to restart your phone like, I don't know, once every two days or something. So, yeah. I don't have TWRP installed in uh, for this because like you don't, you technically don't really need it. I'll probably install later on when I'm flashing kernels and that kind of stuff. Um, since you can just boot into a temporarily, temporary TWRP and then like do all the backups, do all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, so there you go. That took like, you know, <laughs> it's equivalent to when you're just like flashing a new ROM or whatever. I don't know why that is, but I just wanted to 
let you guys know that that is one of the things that I came across so far. Uh, by the way, I've only been using Android 10 for like a few hours now, I would say like three hours. So I just recorded the updating to Android 10 video and edited it and while I was waiting for the slow computer to render it <laughs> I was doing like all the stuff trying to get the launcher working and all that kind of good but yeah uh, oh yeah I've used the uh, ADB shell yoke uh, some of times the text will get cut off because I think you're just pushing down the window manager but like that's only certain apps so if I go into, say, YouTube, all right, I have to fire up my IP vanish because in the firewall I have it set up that YouTube only works if you're connected to a VPN, which is kind of handy. Yeah, so there you go. As you can see, in the the buttons are fine, they're not like pushed down. It's only really uh, notifications that like appear at the bottom of the screen, they get pushed down. But that only really happens like once or twice, you know, so it's pretty good. So yeah, um, I guess thanks for watching and I'll see you later.